Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about polynomials. Um, I'm covering a number of different things on polynomials. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about the definitions, um, what expressions are versus equations, parts of the monomial, uh, basically parts of all polynomials. Um, what are like terms, combining like terms, uh, multiplying monomials into other polynomials, and multiplying binomials and other uh, polynomials. Um, okay, so that's quite a bit of stuff on the plate, so let's get going. So the first thing is a definition of a polynomial, and basically a polynomial is any is a mathematical expression um, or a mathematical term that has coefficient and a variable associated with it. So for instance, 3x. So what we have is a coefficient. And this is going to come up later. We have a uh, variable. And this variable actually has an exponent on it. In this case, it's just 1. All right, the number 7 is not generally considered to be a monomial or polynomial because it's a constant. Okay? And a constant meaning that it doesn't change, so it's always 7, whereas this one could be really anything. Okay. So, um, when we're talking about monom monomials, what we are talking about is expressions that has just have or equations that have one term. So, for instance, 3x, that's a monomial. Um, a binomial is one that has two terms, by meaning two. So if this was like 2y, then 3x plus 2y, that would be a binomial. Tri meaning three um, leads us to trinomials. So let's say it was like plus 3x squared. All right, so we have one term, two terms, three terms, and that's a trinomial. Um, and a polynomial, poly just means many, uh, covers basically everything else. Technically, a anything except for a monomial can also be a polynomial. Um, so that's pretty much that. Okay, uh, expressions versus equations. Now, in mathematics, something like this would be considered to be an expression. Okay, now if we think of the word expression, um, what we are talking about is well, to express. It's just to tell. Okay, so what we have is that's a little small. Let's go bigger. So expression. Okay, to tell versus an equation, which is to well equate or balance or set to be the same. Okay, and those all generally mean the same thing. Now, the the numbers uh, that I've written here are would be considered to be an expression. Okay? But however, they could be made into an equation by using the equal sign. Okay, so something like that, um, and that could make it into an equation, right? And really what it is is that an expression is just saying something. It's just saying, okay, well, I have 3x plus 2y plus 3x squared, but it doesn't actually mean anything. An equation actually um, has, a, has something that it equals to, and that's really it. And in this lesson, what we're going to be doing with is equations, or sorry, expressions and, and not equations. Okay, so we have parts of the monomial. As discussed earlier, I'll go back to, well, I'll use a similar example. Uh, let's say 3x squared y. Okay, now this would be a monomial, um, and as I said, this part here is called the coefficient. Okay, these parts are called variables. This is the exponent. Technically, there's a 1 there. OK, and the whole thing all together is called a term. OK, now, I'm just going to 
get out of here a little bit. Okay, now there's also something that we talk about with uh, polynomials, it's something called a degree. Now, the degree of a polynomial is basically um, the largest exponent that the polynomial has. So in this case, this monomial would be considered to be a second degree. Okay, and the reason why is because the largest exponent on any of the variables is a two. If this is a three, then if this is a three, then it'd be a third degree and fourth degree and so on and so forth. Sometimes people make a mistake and they add them or something like that, and they'll come up with saying like this is a third degree because I have two here and one here, but it's not like that. Basically, we're only consider considering the one variable that has the uh, largest exponent on it. All right. Um, like terms. So sometimes what we'll do is we get um, equations or expressions, um, and it looks something like this. Let's say 3x plus 7y minus 2 times, well, let's keep it simple, 2x plus 5y, something like that. Um, these are considered to be like terms. Okay, I'll now circle them, uh, underline them with uh, different colors here. Okay, so the oranges ones, the orange ones and the green ones are considered to be like terms. And the reason why they are considered to be like is that, well, these ones both have the same variables attached to them as do these ones. So the x's are like and this, the y's are like, and so they're considered to be like terms. And usually in mathematics, what we're trying to do is often, like a, a step in a lot of equations or in a lot of processes is combining like terms. So in this case, I might have like, I have 3x minus 2x, which is just 1x, and 7y plus 5y, so this would be plus 12y. Okay, and I can combine them just by adding their coefficients. All right. Now, when it comes to multiplying uh, monomials, uh, what we have to do is we have to understand something called the distributive property. And the distributive property is a, a pretty easy one to understand. Okay, so the distributive property. Okay, now property is basically something that you possess. Okay, so it's a distributive property of multiplication, and what it means is that um, when you're multiplying the, the, pr the factor uh, spreads throughout the whole equation, or the whole um, expression, or term, well, let's just say term. Okay, that's probably not the exact right definition, so if you know what it is, um, then please don't uh, email me or bother me. It's basically right. Um, okay, so I'll give you an example. For instance, if I have something like this, 2x and multiply it by 3x minus 7y, okay, the distributive property says that this 2x has to go into there and into there. So I have 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared, minus, and then we'd have 2 times 7, which is 14, and x, y. Okay, and so it cannot just go into just the first term. It has to go through the whole thing. Okay, so a lot of times people will say something like 6x squared minus 7y, because they forgot to put it into the second term. This is not correct. Now, a common mistake that uh, people make is, especially when there's a negative number. So let's say, for instance, I have negative 2x, and I have multiplied by 3x minus 7y, I think that's exactly what I wrote before, um, plus 5z. Okay, so when I'm distributing this, this first term would be negative 2x times 3x, so this would be negative 6x squared. The second term would be positive 14xy. And the third term is negative 10xz. Now, 
the, what I found to be helpful, um, well, first of all, um, the reason why this is is because this gets distributed there, and then there, and then there. Now, what I've found to be helpful is to consider the terms not as just the numbers, but as also as the operator adjoining them. And what I mean by that is to consider the the first term here to be, let's say, a 3x. Okay, so this is one term. The next term, a lot of people will just say, well, it's 7y, but it's not actually 7y, it's a negative 7y. Okay, and the next term would be positive 5z. Okay, and like I said, a common problem is that when people multiply it through, they don't actually uh, consider this to be part of the polynomial or as part of that term, and so what they do is they forget to change the sign, and it results in a sign error, which is wrong. Okay, so for example, if I were to do this, I'd get negative 6x squared. Okay, and if I forgot this, what I might do is say minus, um, I guess that would work, um, what they'll do is say minus or yeah, negative 14y, and that turns it positive, and then they might say something like this. Well, um, this is pl plus, and then they forget to multiply through, and it becomes like 10xz or something, and yeah, there should be an x there. Um, and then they end up with the, the sign error incorrect. So make sure you look at your signs carefully when you're doing these sorts of problems. Okay. The last part is multiplying um, mono or multiplying binomials, and this actually is the same procedure for multiplying um, a lot of different things, uh, any polynomial really. Okay, so we're going to still use the distributive property, but it's going to become a little more complicated. So let's switch back to black here, and let's say I have two x uh, plus three y. Okay, so it's just something like that. And I want to multiply it by 6x plus 7. Okay, so what I want to do then is I have to basically multiply um, by the, well, I have to use the distributive property and multiply all the terms by each other. And there's two ways to think of this. Now, the first way is to say, well, this is the same as saying 2x, okay, so this first part, times 6x plus 7, okay, plus 3x, 3y, so you see what I've done, I've split this, this first term, I've split it up, okay, times 6x plus 7 again, okay, um, because it has to be distributed, okay, so we have 12x squared plus 14x plus 18y plus 21y. Uh, and I think I made a mistake there. Yeah, yx. Okay, and in this case, we don't have any like terms to combine them, so we would just leave it like this. And typically, we also list, um, we list the terms in descending order of their index. So uh, the x squared would come first, then the x, and then xy, and so on and so forth. Okay. A second way that you could do this, though, and it's, well, it's hopefully going to come up with the same answer here, is I have 2x plus 3y uh, times 6x plus 7, so the same thing. And I'm just going to move that equation down a little bit. Okay. And basically what we have to do is we have to say, well, this term has to multiply with this term and this term. Okay, and then this term has to multiply with this term and this term. Okay, and sometimes people draw like weird um, arrows, and if it helps you, then great, and they do something like this. They, I see this quite a bit. Okay, and then they have like some weird thing where it looks like a bug or something like that. This to me is actually kind of confusing, so I don't actually do it. Um, but you can consider it to be like this, and to me that makes a little more sense. Okay, so these two, these ones have to be 
multiplied basically everywhere. Okay, and so anyways, we'd end up with 2x times 6x, which is 12x squared, 2x times or times 7, which is plus 14x, and 3y plus 6x is plus 18xy, and plus 3y plus 7 is 21y. And you can see, like, we basically came up with the well, we didn't basically come up, we actually came up with the exact same thing, um, just through two different methods. Okay, so whichever one works out well for you, um, it's going to be fine. All right, um, and really, that's the that's how it works with um, polynomials um, and multiplying binomials. Um, I'll finish off with just one last thing, and that's with um, showing you how to do with polynomials as well. And it's really just the same thing. So let's then start off with something like um, I keep coming up with the same examples. I don't know what three x plus uh, five and we'll say times 2x squared plus 6x plus 7. So we have um, a, poly, a trinomial with a binomial. And it's really, it's not really that bad, it's just exactly the same thing. So this 3x has to be multiplied by everything in here. So what we get is 3x, so we have 3x times 2x squared, which is 6x cubed. Then we have 3x times 6x, which is positive 18x squared. And then we have the same thing, 3x times 7, which is positive 21x. Okay, then we move to the 5. We get 5 times 2, 2x squared, which is uh, plus 10x squared. 5 times 6x, which is plus 30x, and then we have 5 times 7, which is plus 35. Now in this case we have some like terms, and we're going to, typically what you should do is start listing them in order of descending, um, descending degree, which is what I uh, said before. So what we have is we have a cubed here first, so 6x cubed, and then we're going to work for the, look for the squared. So we have 18 squared plus 10 squared, so this would be 28 x squared, and then we can look for all the x's, so this would be 51 x, and then the coefficient, just the constants, which is 35, and then we'd end up with something like that. Okay, so uh, once again, I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, just uh, drop me a line, send me an email, throw a comment in the comment box, and I will try and help you uh, as quick as I can.